Welcome back to This Week in Morgan County. Our guest is Audrey Morris. She's the director of Starting Points Family Resource Center. And Audrey, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a native of Morgan County, born and raised here. I am a native. My parents are native. My grandparents were native. I think we go back about five generations. So. What was the work of your parents? Um, my dad worked on the orchards in Hancock, Maryland, the apple orchard. Um, my mom did that a little bit, and then um, she went to work in the factories here at, the, that, um, at London Fog in Hancock, and okay. then in Hagerstown, and then back um, to what was Sealy Pine Furniture. All right. You uh, graduate of Berkeley Springs High School. Yes. Uh, Shepherd College. Yes. And what, what made you, you've been working for Starting Points now for 16 years since it started. What, what, what was your interest? Why, why did you want to do that work? Um, whenever I was working at WVU Extension as a program um, coordinator, mm -hmm. and I was working with then, they were called Extension Homemakers, now they're called CEOS, and we were doing some projects on teen pregnancy prevention. And I met this lady, and she said, hey, I, I know of this funding opportunity. Um, you could write a grant to get money for the county to do teen pregnancy prevention. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what a grant was. I'd never heard of a grant. Um, but we pulled a group of people together and wrote the grant, and it was funded. And uh, so that's kind of where it all started. You do incredible work here, and it's a very small budget. What is your budget, your annual budget? Um, our budget usually runs around 170, 190,000. Um, that depends on what grants we have coming in, and uh, of course, local donations. And break it down for us. Wh where does that money come from? Right now, we're getting 107 thousand dollars from the um, DHH State DHHR Bureau for Children and Families, and we have. Um, right around 12000 from United Way of the Eastern Panhandle. Um, we have some funds coming from the Tom of Virginia Seeley Foundation, also Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, and then some other smaller grants and uh, donations from the community. And you're the you're the only full-time employee, Correct. and then the rest are volunteers? We have um, four part-time employees and then volunteers. Right. Now, you're serving a big population here. Um, and I'm wondering if your budget was double. I mean, how, are you fulfilling the needs of the people who are in need um, in Morgan County? We try very hard, but there's always more that can be done. It's, you know, when you're in a nonprofit, you're doing a service. Um, when you're in social service, there's always more that can be done. Um, I think as a community, we're trying very hard to meet the needs of the people who are here in our community. Um, one of the things that um, we kind of talked about, I think, mm -hmm. by email was the network of nonprofits. So we're pretty hooked in to the Tri-County and also on a regional and state level. So if there's something that a family comes to us and needs, mm -hmm. if we can't work with that in this county, in Morgan County, um, we reach out to the other counties around us first to see if we can find another agency who could potentially help us um, with that family's needs. Are there any other uh, groups in Morgan County who address the question of hunger? Um, there are food pantries. There's, I think, three or four, maybe five food pantries that are operating in the county. Who runs um, those? Who runs those? Um, churches, churches and the interfaith group. Right. So yours, so yours is one of a number of food pantries. We're not a food pantry. You're not, what's the difference between a food pantry well, and a community Well, the food pantries kitchen? are giving um, boxed food. We're giving a hot meal. So you could come in and eat our meal. What you're receiving from the food pantries, you'd have to go home and prepare. Okay. And is, is yours the only group uh, providing hot meals yes. to people yes. here in Morgan County? Right. And it's not just food. I mean, you, do, you have the backpack program giving food to kids in schools. You have the community kitchen, but you also have other programs including literacy programs. Yes. Well, tell us about those. Um, some of our literacy programs, we, um, we started a project five or six years ago called Bonding with Books. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing with that project is sending books um, out to, we're distributing them through our early childhood programs in the county, early Head Start, Head Start, daycare centers. Um, so we're sending brand new books home with preschool kids. So we're trying to get literacy into the homes before the kids 
hit the school system. Um, with those free books that the kids get to keep, we're also sending parenting information, um, how important it is to read to kids literacy stuff. Yesterday we had a free activity in the park, and so we're sending home information about where can families go to do free things together so that it's not always about, well, if we're low income, we can't afford to go to the movies or we can't afford to go out to dinner. Here are all of these range of opportunities that people can participate in for free. Where, where do the books come from? Are you giving out free books? Where, where we are giving out free books. Sometimes they're donated, um, but that's where the Sealy Foundation and the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation come into play because those grants are specifically for literacy. Do you have any programs with the local public library? Um, we worked with the library this summer um, and also with the school system and ex WVU Extension to do a summer program. So we did partner pretty heavily with um, all of those groups this summer to make, the, and the Boys and Girls Club was amazing whenever we were doing meals and things. So it, well, that was really a group effort to pull off a summer program. Okay. What is, um, you know, one of the things we read about a lot is an increase in uh, drug use, heroin use in the Eastern Panhandle. Mm -hmm. People say that's linked to poverty rates, um, the use, the drug use. Um, do you see that? And do you, is there anything that, did you face that among your client, among the people who you serve? Um, we don't necessarily see the drug use. We see the impact of it where we will see grandparents or other relatives who are caring for children because their parents are kind of out of the picture for whatever reason. Um, if it's drug related, then maybe they're incarcerated or maybe they're just unable to care for their children. So another relative is caring for the child. And this idea of grandparents taking care of grandchildren, you raise that right now, uh, how prevalent is that among the people that you interact with? Um, at the moment, we don't have a large population of that. We do have a few, but we don't have a large group. I know a couple of years ago, there was the statistics that one of our elementary schools had over 100 grandparents. There were 100 children in the schools that were being raised by relatives. That's been Probably not two. parent relatives, but by non-parent relatives. Correct. Right. Either right. grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, someone else that was caring for the child. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback do you get from this? I, I'm really interested in the backpack program because I, I remember that there was another, tell me if you know the name of this program. There was another program that was run in the summer that provided backpack, backpack food for kids. Do you remember about this? I don't know which program it was, but what happens in the summer? Okay, so you're providing food for kids mm -hmm. during the school year. Well, and that's why, was it Energy Express? Yes, that's Okay, it. so Energy Express was not funded this summer. So that was why we, part, Starting Points partnered with the Boys and Girls Club, the school system, and Extension um, to do a summer program. And so we provided free breakfast and lunch there were a literacy program, there were STEM activities, there was physical activities. That was at your office? Um, one day a week it was at starting points and then we did it at area schools the rest of the week. So we were only in each area one day, but we were taking some backpack food out to students in those areas. Do you have a sense of relative poverty rates between Morgan County and the rest of the state, or at least the rest of the Eastern Panhandle? Do you, do you, if you don't even have the statistics, do you have a sense of what's going on here compared to areas? I think it's relative. We're a smaller county. You know, I do a lot of stuff in Berkeley County, um, and I see and hear the poverty rate, but when you look at the population of our county versus their county, it's relative to the size. So I don't think that we're off the charts in this county, but we do have the poverty. If you you know, or if you're looking at population versus poverty, it's about probably um, comparative. Would would you consider your work to be charity? Do you consider no. it a charitable organization? Um, I do not, and the reason that I don't think it is is because we're not. You know, we the the hand up versus a handout and. You know, our logo is helping families help themselves. 
Um, one of the programs that we have been doing for several years, and, and we've kind of done it all along, is if a family's coming in and they have a, a need, they're in a crisis, we're gonna work with them to um, eliminate that immediate crisis, but then we want to have an ongoing relationship with them. Um, we can help them with writing job resumes. We can help them go on, on, online and do job searches. Um, we've done mock interviews. We've written resumes for people. You know, so we're working with them to get out of poverty, to get a job, and to move their family towards self-sufficiency. That's our big, um, our big push. We don't want people to just be in poverty and help them while they're there. Um, we want to see them move out of that and move, move into being successful families. Because the cycle of poverty is real. It is. When you get into poverty, it's really hard to get out. Yes. Tell us about a success story where you actually saw that your program lifted someone out. Or, I mean, without naming names. Are there success stories that way? We do have success stories that way. We, um, we've worked with several families, and um, so I hate to kind of give too much right. information because I don't want to identify. But, but just general, without identifying, just general. Yeah, um, we worked with someone recently, and when she came in to us, um, she was receiving state benefits, West Virginia Works food stamps, um, and by, by volunteering with us and then eventually working with us, um, she was lifted out of that. She went to a job making over $14 an hour. But we had mentors that we placed with her to help her through that process. And um, we as staff worked with her as mentors. And she was an amazing person. So she was you know, bound to be successful. She had been and then had hit some pretty hard times and wasn't. But you know, she needed that help, that nurturing to be able to return to you know, being self-sufficient. Um, you know, there, the other thing, the cycle of poverty is real, and, and the other question is justice versus poverty. I mean, justice versus charity. And uh, this is, the, you said $14 an hour a job. I don't know what you consider to be a living wage, but you know, some people say it might be $14 or $15 an hour just to get by. And one idea is that on justice is if you increase the minimum wage, to a living wage, that you would be able to address a lot of these problems. Um, so I'm wondering if you see that balance of the state's role in lifting people out of poverty as opposed to um, charitable donations, giving people food, that kind of thing. Well, I, I'm going to use this now. Um, Eastern Panhandle ranks in the top five most expensive counties in West Virginia for housing wages needed for a two bedroom rental unit. Our minimum wage is $8. If you're living in Jefferson County, that's number one in the state. You need to be making $16.42 an hour. Um, Morgan County, we're number three in the state. Number three in terms of what? Um, top five most expensive counties in West Virginia for housing wages needed for a two bedroom rental. So in Morgan County, it's $15.75. That's what's needed to, to get by? Okay. Yeah, to be able to afford a two-bedroom rental. So that's $15.75. And the theory is that you should not be paying more than 30%, not more than 30% of your income should be going to housing expenses. So that's not just your apartment, but that's all of the, the cost of living there, your electric, your, all of your services should not be more than 30 percent. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's on this paper, but a lot of people are paying over 50 percent. You know, if you're paying 50 percent of your income to live somewhere, and that's not a mansion, it's just some place that's safe, right. then where, what do, where are you getting food? Where are you getting, you know, how can you afford to have a car? In Morgan County, we have no public transportation. And we do see people walking. We to see work people from, walking from all, over the place. all over the place. And we are one of the only counties in the eight county region. We are the only county that does not have public transportation out of eight counties. And, and you know, there's a lot more to talk about here, but we're running out of time. Just give, if people want more information, what, what's the website that people can go to and get more information? Um, www.starting-points.org. And thank you very much for thank joining you. us, and we hope to have you back sometime. And thank you very much for listening This Week in Morgan County. We'll be back next week. Spread the word, This Week in Morgan County. Thank you.